Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to talk about the recent news article that was in Indian Express and is related to wildfires. We are going to link wildfires with the static topic of geography and uh, the topics like cloud formation, adiabatic lapse rate, the adverse impacts of forest fires and associated weather phenomena. Now, as far as this topic is concerned, this topic talks about the pyro, uh, formation of pyrocumulonimbus cloud. Now, as far as pyrocumulonimbus clouds are concerned, these are also known as fire clouds. Fire clouds. Why they are known as fire clouds? Because they are generated because of the forest fire. Usual reason is forest fire. Also, they can be generated because of volcanic eruption. Volcanic eruption. So, we are going to discuss the process or the formation of these pyrocumulonimbus uh, clouds and its impact and why its frequency has increased. Now, let us see first the causes. The causes can be wildfires. Now, wildfires can be generated be either because of natural phenomena. Natural phenomena can be because of lightning or because of anthropogenic factors. For example, if suppose lightning is happening and lightning impacts directly into the dry leaves or the uh, bark of the tree, then they catches fire. And because of natural phenomena, the forest fires spread wildly. A similar reason is there as far as anthropogenic factor is concerned. Anthropogenic is basically man-made factors or man-related factors. Now what happens if suppose someone is doing camping or someone is smoking and they leave the bird in the forest uh, uh, adjacent forest areas. Now the dry leaves they catch fire because of this uh, uh, fires because of camping or uh, from the bird or because of some electricity faults. So these fires also spread wildly as far as because the trees in the forest are interconnected, right? They are very closely knit, very closely spaced. So because of that, these forest fires spread wildly. If we consider the process of formation of, oh, here one more thing is there that volcanic eruption also causes formation of pyrocumulonimbus clouds so the uh, the process of formation of pyrocumulonimbus clouds is first of all there is fire now this fire is either because of wildfire or because of volcanic eruption but we are focusing here on wildfires now if suppose wildfire is there what it releases ash content solid ash content then smoke and then water vapor. Now, because of fire, what will happen here? The temperature rises significantly. If you talk about the Australian bushfire that happened during 2019-20, there the temperature was around 800 degrees Celsius. Now, because of this temperature, this high temperature, what will happen? Low pressure will be there. High temperature is associated with low pressure. Now, the adjoining high pressure area, what will happen? From adjoining high pressure area, strong winds will blow. This strong wind will help the fire to rise up. Now, this fire, along with this fire, the ash content, the smoke content and the water vapor, they rise up. When they rise up, they form clouds. Now, because of the heating, these clouds, because of heating, these clouds further rise and when they rise, there is adiabatic expansion. Adiabatic expansion. Now, since the source of these clouds are fire, that's why these clouds are known as pyrocumulonimbus clouds. Pyro means fire. As far as water vapor is concerned, water vapor content is comparatively less in these 
clouds in pyrocumulonimbus clouds though nimbus is written in the cloud name nimbus means rain bearing clouds though it is there but the quantity is very less why because the source is fire region had the source been oceanic region or pond region then there would have been more water vapor so here the water vapor is less right so that's why the uh, amount of rain that will fall is less so if rain is not there then what will happen there will be more frequency of lightning so it is generated because of lightning but since there is less rain then more lightning more lightning will be there and this lightning further adds up to forest fires so a kind of chain reaction starts when one forest fire happens because of which pyrocumulonimbus clouds form and again there is lightning and again there is forest fire so it is very difficult to control these kinds of forest fires also there is presence of strong winds because of generation of low pressure area because of high temperature so a stormy kind of con condition stormy weather local or micro weather condition micro stormy weather condition develops because of lightning and the strong winds and this further helps in spread of these kinds of wildfires so the wildfire spread across areas now again if we look into the article this article talks about the recent forest fire in usa and canada the recent wildfires in usa and canada and how pyrocumulonimbus clouds are formed here if we talk about the frequency then before 2023 what used to happen that the number of pyrocumulonimbus clouds per year was around 120 globally 120 pyrocumulonimbus cloud clouds were formed globally per year but after 2023 one around 140 pyrocumulonimbus clouds this can be written as pycbs so 140 pyrocumulonimbus clouds has been formed in canada itself in a year so we can see the increased frequency of pyro formation of pyrocumulonimbus clouds and because of which there is a spread of wildfire because of which there is more wildfire in these regions also again if we look into this this map then the main reason of wildfire is anthropogenic around 2 to 3% of the wildfires are because of natural region but majorly it is because of around 80 to 90% is because of anthropogenic region so pyrocumulonimbus clouds are associated with both wildfires as well as volcanic eruption if we see the volcanic eruption of krakatoa volcano then we can see the content of pyrocumulonimbus cloud that is written in our ncert as well this is the formation of pyrocumulonimbus clouds that because of the fire because of the fire the air rises up air is sucked in it rises up because of adiabatic expansion then there is formation of pyrocumulonimbus clouds since there is very less water vapor so downburst is comparatively less but lightning is more now this lightning is again generating forest fire and because of strong winds they spread quickly across the area let me show you the real image of forest fire that was recently captured in canada this is the real formation of forest fire you can see the cumulonimbus uh, shape of the cloud as well as the nature of the height the expanse of these clouds so the adverse impact is comparatively larger so we can write this wildfire in two three areas as far as cloud for if there is a question suppose if there is a question related to cloud uh, formation 
there also we can mention cumulonimbus clouds as well as pyrocumulonimbus clouds that are associated with wild, wildfire. If directly a question comes related to fire, forest fire, then also we can write that forest fire, it is spreads very quickly. We can uh, talk about the natural and anthropogenic factor and then we can link pyrocumulonimbus clouds and the data which we already saw that the frequency has increased because of various reasons across the continents. And then we can link it with the disaster management aspect that is the mitigation process, uh, processes as far as forest fire is concerned. So we can link it with environment also. That is huge loss of biodiversity that we saw during Australian bushfire that happened in 2019 and 20. So all these things we can link together from one article. Thank you.